In week 14, we take a look at Web Basics, and these are concepts and terms and topics related to web design. And this is a very introductory um, preview into terms related to web design, but it'll give you a good background knowledge of the World Wide Web and also of HTML and CSS. So let's talk about the World Wide Web. What is the Internet? The Internet is a collection of hardware computers and network lines that are linked together. And a lot of times folks confuse the Internet with the World Wide Web. They're actually two separate things. So that's some um, pretty interesting trivia that you'll want to keep in your mind of how the fact that the Internet and the World Wide Web are actually two different terms. So what is the World Wide Web? The World Wide Web is the software that allows computers on the net to talk to each other. So you have a collection of hardware, computers and network lines, which you are familiar with because you work on that hardware to do your assignments, um, to access this class. And then there's also network lines, whether it's wireless or fiber optic, um, whatever the format may be, that connects those computers together. But the ability to actually interact with each other is brought to you by the World Wide Web, and that's the software that's running on the Internet. And as you know, individual files on the web have text, video, animation, and sound. So how did the web get started? This is a really interesting story. The web was actually formed in the 1960s by the Department of Defense, and it was called the ARPANET. And it was actually used by the government to share sensitive materials across computer networks. Um, they had professors that were studying things such as the Cold War, and they'd be working in California and New York, and the old school send it in a brown envelope. Um, the security wasn't there. So they actually started the ARPANET with the purpose of, of sharing secure materials for, um, as we know it as homeland security, but national security at the time. And so it's kind of cool to think of the World Wide Web as having almost like a spy beginning. In 1990, Tim Berners-Lee created the first graphical user face and called it the World Wide Web. So the original ARPANET was very, very basic. And it's nothing like what you interact with today. And they actually began to make the Internet public um, in the early 90s with Tim Berners-Lee's creation of the graphical user interface known as the World Wide Web. In 1994, a consortium came together, a world, the World Wide Web Consortium, which is known as W3C, and they came together to begin to say, okay, we've got this opportunity, we've got the hardware, and we've got the software, and now we need to start coming up with some standards so that there's some consistency across the World Wide Web. So, the W3C, you're going to get some background information in this presentation, and then we'll take a look at some of the specific things that the W3C offers in the next video. So what is the W3C? It's actually an international community that creates web standards. So, you've always wondered about who comes up with the English language, there's rules, there's punctuation, there's grammar. This is a very similar concept. How can we make, even though you can post a website about your favorite topic and I can post a website about my favorite topic, there has to be some standards so that there's some consistency across the web. Um, it has both paid employees and volunteers. Big companies such as Microsoft is a part of it. Research institutions, universities, really, really neat consortium. And without the standards, the World Wide Web would not function as we know it. Um, it would not have progressed and be as robust as it is today. So we get the concept of how the Internet was started and how the World Wide Web was started. And then we also know about W3C. Now let's talk about some basic web terms that you may already be familiar with because you used the World Wide Web, but you weren't exactly sure why they were termed that way. We know that a website is a collection of pages linked together. A hyperlink is actually used to connect web pages both internally and externally. So web pages by themselves could have some dynamic features within them if you're using something like animation or audio, but what really brings them alive, what really makes them hyper is the hyperlink. And this is the code that connects one web page to another. Web browsers. Web browsers are used to allow you, the end user, to actually view the web page. 
We have something called the client, and that's where you're sitting. You're the computer workstation, which is used to develop web pages and in turn view those web pages on a web browser. We also have a web server, and in a web server, that's where the files are actually posted, and they are joined together to be a part of the World Wide Web. FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol, and this is the process of sending web pages from the client station to the web server. So if you're developing a page or a website for your e-business project, and you want to be able to show it to the rest of the class and to Dr. Rodriguez, then you're going to want to be able to post it somewhere. And the process of you getting that file up onto the World Wide Web is called FTP. HTTP. This is termed Hypertext Transfer Protocol. This is the rules that allow a web server to speak to a web browser. So once you post that file via FTP, how does a web browser, such as Internet Explorer, know how to read that file? And that's through Hypertext Transfer Protocol. A URL is a uniform resource locator. That's a very specific definition of basically a hyperlink, or you'll say, send me the link, or what's the link? Well, there has to be some information contained in that link so that the web page can go to another web page and the web browser knows how to interpret that address. And that's all contained within the URL. And then domain name, host name. And that's the part of the URL that sponsors the site. FGCU, that's the domain name. FGCU.edu, the domain name. And let's take a look at the web terms diagram. This is a great way, especially if you like to see, see, see these terms laid out visually. You can see at the bottom you have the client station. You are actually interacting with a web server hosted by FGCU in which this file is located, and then the file is pushed out and saved at YouTube, so you're directed from the FGCU web server and you're clicking over to YouTube to watch this video. Your web browser, whether it's Internet Explorer or Chrome or Safari, is allowing you to view the video. And you can see the process of FTP allowed me to get this video up to um, both the FGCU server and to, and to YouTube. And then finally, we'll conclude this video presentation with a great visual called the anatomy of a URL. And this was what I was mentioning a few slides ago. A URL, this is very specific terminology associated with a link. There has to be a way for the web browser and the web server to communicate. There has to be a way for one website to communicate with another website. And that's why you have the anatomy of a URL. It begins with hypertext transfer protocol, which the message formats computers use to exchange information. Um, remember you're using forward slashes. Sometimes folks confuse forward and backslashes, but in a URL you're going to use forward slashes. You have the domain extensions such as fgcu.edu. And then you have directories or subfolders. In this instance, iTunes would be a subfolder. Download would be another subfolder. And then you'd actually have your file name, itunes9.html.